since Shelby and Eric don't seem to know anything about Britney Spears and they don't seem to actually care, and Shelby claimed to not know very much about her, I decided to give a little bit of a Britney 101 as an introduction. Britney Spears burst on the pop scene in 1998 with her hit Baby One More Time. After that, she followed up in 2000 with Oops, I Did It Again. She followed that up in 2001 with Britney. And then in 2003, she came out with In The Zone, then released a Greatest Hits album, and then she went crazy. And then she bounced back from that slightly with Blackout, Peter's favorite album. And now she's back for good with a better album, in my opinion, uh, but Peter would disagree with me, with Circus. And that brings you up to speed. I know this is breaking the rules, and uh, I guess Eric's probably going to punish me again for doing this. Um, but my favorite Britney Spears song is actually a remix of uh, one of her older songs called Born to Make You Happy. And she actually re-sang the song for the remix, and it's not really remix E. But um, I like it so much better than the original version. It's my favorite Britney Spears song. And I can't really explain it without like playing a clip for you. So here it is. And Peter and everyone who, uh, in regards to the song If You Seek Amy, um, I don't think that's actually the case. I think it's just a weird coincidence that it sounds like that, simply because the rest of the lyrics of the song are talking about how she's always trying to follow Amy to whatever party that Amy's gonna go. And like Amy from this channel talked about, um, there are other rumors that it's like her alter ego, um, which I also don't really think it's true, mainly because she didn't write the song. The song was written by Max Martin, who's one of my favorite songwriters. He wrote um, a lot of her hits, such as Baby One More Time, uh, and Oops, I Did It Again. He wrote songs for um, one of my other favorite artists, Marion Raven. And um, he's written for Backstreet Boys and sing mostly pop songs, but he also does rock. He's really versatile as a songwriter. Where would I go and in the world and the first three things that I would do once I was there? Um, I am, as a huge Disney fan, I am dying to get to Tokyo Disneyland. Um, it's, like, everyone I know who's been there say it's so much better than the American parks and... People who have been to all five Disney parks around the world say that it's done the best. Um, so I guess the first thing that I would probably do if I was going today, I'd definitely go do the Mickey Mouse Review, which is an attraction that started in Disney World and then was moved to Tokyo Disneyland when they opened in 1982. And they're closing it in, I believe, March. Um, so I'd do that because it's not going to be there anymore. And it's really nostalgic. And I never got to do it since it wasn't at Disney World by the time I was alive. And then... Um, Second thing I would do is go and see a parade because the parades at Tokyo Disneyland are amazing. They completely blow the parades at the American Disney parks out of the water. And then the third thing that I would do is go to the other Disney park in Tokyo, which is Tokyo Disney Seas, which is completely brand new. Um, the only ride that I think that they have that we have here in the U.S. Uh, is the Tower of Terror, but theirs isn't Twilight Zone themed, so really the only similarities is that you get a free fall experience, but other than that, the rides are completely different. Amy asked what our go-to party food is, and I don't have one. I, um, Whenever I'm invited to a party where we have to bring our own dish, I always ask what people want me to bring, and they usually tell me. So, And I'm not a chef, so... It's usually like a vegetable tray that I pick up at a grocery store or something that's pre-done. Um, to an office party, I always bring Jello with a stapler in it. So I guess that's like my go-to food for office parties. But I always bring something else because nobody ever wants to eat my Jello with a stapler in it. And I don't understand why. Because every time I do it, I buy a brand new stapler. I'm not reusing staplers. No one's grubby hands have been on the stapler. I wash my hands before touching the stapler and putting it into the Jello. So I would feel totally comfortable eating that jello. I don't know why no one else will. Shelby asked if we have ever been in trouble in the, with the law. One speeding tick on my, ticket on my record, and like Eric said, parking tickets don't go on your record, but um, I have illegally parked at my school many a time, and I think I've had like 10 tickets there. It's like 30 bucks every time you do it. So it's added up over the past five years, but those are my only two tickets. I've gotten pulled over like seven times in my life, but I'm always able to talk my way out of tickets, so jealous. Eric, each week I like you less and less. Anyway, I didn't watch your video until after stores closed, and I'm not going to Walmart because I hate them. So um, I have no milk, and I have no grape Kool-Aid. So um, how about a compromise? What I do have 
is cranberry ocean spray. Look, it's 100% juice. And I have half and half because we are coffee drinkers. Uh, so I'm going to mix some of these two in a cup and I'm not doing a pint. I'm not doing a quart. That's ridiculous. So I'll determine the portions. All right. So half and half. That's enough. And then cranberry juice. That's enough. Spoon. All right, bottoms up. <coughs> it's, oh, I had a text message. It's like, um, I don't know why, but it's like, mm. <coughs> blueberry yogurt with three months past the expiration date and liquefied. Um, I'm not finishing that. So, what happened? Power outage. Oh my god. Okay. Um, I'm home alone and we are experiencing technical difficulties. So I am going to call it a night, everybody. Um, have a great weekend. Peter, we'll see you Monday.